Right, okay, so we're going to have a look at Huffman encoding. Um, and in this case, we are going to be looking at how we would use frequency to make something a lot smaller in terms of compression. So let's start with this. So we have banana. Now, banana is quite a good word to use because it has letters which are repeated. And then we're going to add a space. Uh, and I'm going to put an underscore just to represent the space. And then coffee, because today is fueled by coffee. Okay, so what we can do now is we can identify at this point uh, anything which uh, repeats. So let's have a look along here. So we've got, um, we'll do a B. Uh, so here is our B. Um, I can cross that off as I go through. That's only got one. Now my A is my next letter. So I've got one, two, three. There we go, I can put that there. The next one is an N and I've got one, two. Okay, that's fine. I've then got a space and there's just one of those. So I'm gonna put my underscore there. Um, and then I have a C, so I've only got one of those. Um, a single O. Um, two Fs. And then two Es. Now, the reason I have looked for the frequency of my letters is this is how I'm going to build my binary tree. Now, the important thing to remember at this point is I want to remember how many letters there were in the first place. So I can go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, because space is still a character. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. So we're gonna put that 13 up here there okay and we're going to come back to that later now the next thing i'm going to do just take my razor get rid of all of this um and also to have a little look over here and try and put this into um, order now what i want to do is i want to put my least frequent at the top uh, because it's going to make it easier for me to uh, to draw my table so my least frequent we can keep with uh, b which was one. Um, the next one is a space, which is the one I'm just gonna cross them off as I go, because again, that just makes my life easier to, to try and remember things. C is a one, A is a one. So we've done those two as well. Uh, now the next one, if I go down the list, was an N, because that was a two. There we go, F is also a two, and E is a two as well. Okay, and then the most frequent letter there is an A. So what I've done here is I've actually made a thing called a frequency table. And that frequency table is basically having all of the letters that appear, or all the characters uh, that appear, um, and putting them in order. Now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna bounce between these two frequency tables and update them as I create my binary tree. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna go from the top and the bottom of my tree is going to be my least frequent letters. Um, and I'll explain to you why that is in a little while. So I'm gonna start off with B with a frequency of one. I'm just gonna draw a little square around that. Um, and then I'm also going to do a space with also a frequency of one. Now, if I combine those two together, I then have a B space with a frequency of two because what you do is you add the frequency together so there we go put it together like that and create a tree now the thing i can do now is because i've got a b space which is a two up here my frequency table changes so i have a c which was a one and o which is a one but i no longer have um our B space, which are both ones, because we've now got this one. So what I'm actually going to do is have these initial letters on their own at the top. So N, which is two, F, two, E, two. Then I have B space, two, um, and then finally A, which is a three. So again, I'm going to take my eraser. I'm just going to get rid of this one because this table is no longer needed. 
So I can now go to the next one. So C and O. Now C and O can come down here at the bottom of my tree. So C has a frequency of one, so there's only one C. And then O, there was only one of those. There we go, put that together and then combine the frequencies together to make C O, which has a frequency of two. There we go, and we can make our little tree. Now again, we're gonna do this again. We're gonna bring these all the way up to the top. So our frequency table becomes N2, F2, E2, then we've got our B space, which is a two, but now we've also got a C and an O, which is a two. Then finally, we've got our A, which was a three. So there we go, let's get rid of these again. So you can see our frequency table, if we just leave ourselves enough uh, room, we can bounce back in between. You might want to do this on a scrap piece of paper. Now, instead of combining these two together, what we are then going to do is we are going to keep adding our single letters. So over here, we have an N with a frequency of two. So we pop that into a box. Um, and then that means we can combine this to make N, B, space. And if we combine the frequencies, that gives us a frequency of four. So let's put that together, make our tree. Um, now what I'm going to do to make this a little bit quicker, um, I'm then just gonna cross that off and I'm going to add that to the next frequency table in a second when I've done this side because the next one is F. Um, so we can do the same thing on this side, which is F2. You try and add in the smallest frequency on the left. Okay, there we go and combine those together. And these ones are going to make F, C, O, two. There we go, put that together and make the tree. Now, we've done that. Um, that puts E at the top. So E has a frequency of two. Then what we have is we have our E, up here, we no longer have B space because B in space has been combined with N. Now that's a four. Um, and over here, we also have a frequency of four because F, C and O are combined. So that means that A is gonna come all the way up to the top here. So A is three. Then we have N, B space, which is four. And then we have F, C, O, which is also four. So oh, we are going to grab our eraser. There we go. And then we're going to do it again. Um, we are going to combine our last two. So again, doing the smallest one on the left hand side. So we have E, which is two. Draw our little box around it, which gives us E, N, B, space. And then if we combine the frequencies, that gives us six. Let's draw a box around it. These boxes are getting a bit unwieldy now. Um, and make our tree. There we go. Um, we've done E, so we're going to add A to this side. Now A is three. There we go, around here. Um, and then we have A, F, C, O. We're combining our frequencies, so our frequency there is seven. There we go, drawing our boxes around it. Now, at this point, we've got nothing left, no single letters to add over here. So our frequency table is essentially done. Get rid of that. The last thing we have to do, because there's nothing left to combine, is that we combine the top two. So just making sure that we've got our bits down there. And then we can go E, N, B, space, A, F, C, O. 
Now, if we have a look at that and combine the frequencies, the frequency six and seven is actually 13. Now, where have we seen 13 before? Well, we saw it over here. Our 13 was the number of letters that we had in the entire message. However, the number of letters that we need in our character set for Huffman is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, the reason we're doing this using frequencies is to allow the num or the letters or characters which are most commonly used to have the smallest number of bits. And the way, the way that we do that is to say, if you go to the left, we give it a zero. And if we have to follow the tree to the right, we give it a one. So if I wanted to find uh, the letter A, so A was our most frequent. A appeared three times. So A, in this case, we go to the right and then to the left until we actually find the A. Now that, if we go to the right, is one. And then to the left is zero. So we have two bits to represent an A. Now, if we wanted to go to our least uh, frequent number, so uh, or our least frequent um, character, which could potentially be B or space, any of those at the bottom. Um, so let's let's go for a B that had a frequency of one. We would go left, right, right, left. So left, right, right, left. So you can see there the least frequent number now has more bits. So if we were then to place out banana coffee, we could then count up the number of bits by working out how we follow the tree all the way down until we find that actual character. And what that does is it creates something where not only can you have something which uses the best possible use of the bit patterns, but also something which is unambiguous. And by unambiguous, what I mean is that when you get to an A, there is no other uh, character in this particular set which starts with one zero. Because if you go one zero, you have to get to A and you won't get to anything else. If I go down zero one, one, there is no zero one one because you have to then either add a one or a zero. So all of these bit patterns that we are creating are properly unique and unambiguous. And that's why Huffman encoding works so well.